So I wanted to share with you a project that I'm gonna do for the first time. We'll just see how it goes. I bought used this um, 10 and a half inch patty dam mold that, uh, or excuse me, patty gray dam mold. <laughs> anyway, um, and I've never used it before. So it was coated with uh, a really thick, thick layer of zip already, uh, boron nitrite spray zip. Um, or Zip or ZYP or however you call it, I call it Zip. So um, it was already coated with quite a bit of that spray. So I used a stiff bristle brush um, that I have that I roughed this up and got some of that extra out of the mold, gave it a nice um, clean coat of spray. And uh, I bought used this um, big, big uh, pile of scrap glass from, from someone. And in it included a lot of these shards of this uh, orange and white mix here. It almost looked like she cut some of it and then maybe dropped the sheet on the floor. So there were some bigger pieces that were left, but a lot of it was just um, little stuff like this. Can you see the variation in that? Um, look how that pattern is, that's really cool. Anyway, I actually tried to piece all this back together to see if it would be a, a regular sheet and there were some pieces still missing and, and I, while it was kind of a fun little puzzle project and I did get quite a bit of it pieced back together, just wasn't uh, what I was looking for. So anyway, I'm, I've been pushing it around the shop for a little while trying to figure out what to do with it. And I decided since I've got this patty gray mold I've never used, why don't I give that a try? And so I'm going to chop this up into, into pieces lay it into this mold and do a full fuse on it and see if I can get a nice round circle out of it. So because I've never used the mold before, I went online, I looked for information. I'll drop a link into the comments, but there was a great little tutorial from uh, Creative Paradise that uh, I printed out. I always appreciate, even though I didn't buy this mold from them, I bought other molds from them, but I didn't buy this one from them directly, but I appreciate that they put this kind of uh, information on the web. And so what I found in here was that it said to put a piece of paper in the fiber paper in the bottom of the mold. I've never seen that before uh, or he heard that. I have heard people who love these molds, these patty gray molds, and I've heard of others who are really disappointed with them. They have trouble with them. They get big bubbles. And so um, the Creative Paradise instructions said to put a piece of kiln paper in the bottom and that will help prevent um, some of those eruptions that can happen. So I'm gonna use their firing schedule and their tips. I've cut a piece of paper and put it in the bottom of the mold here. I'm gonna chop up this glass and stick it in. Uh, we'll fire it according to the schedule. I'll post that schedule as well, and um, we'll see what comes of it. If I get a nice, uh, clean 10 and a half inch or so circle, then I can uh, slump that into a little you know, plate or something fun for the holidays. I think this has got a really neat uh, yeah, fall feel to it, and so uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm ready to get started here. I've got safety first, so I've got my glasses that I'm gonna wear, and um, instead of cutting this glass, I decide I'm just gonna nip it. I've got these mosaic tile nippers. I can just nip this up into pieces, make kind of quick work of it that way, instead of messing around with cutting and, and trying to break the glass. Uh, I figured this would be an easy enough way to do it. So let's go, let's do this. This is about it. I had um, cleaned a fair amount of this glass beforehand, but it looked like I needed a little bit more, so I had to clean a few more pieces. Um, I still had a couple of larger sheets here, so I thought I would try to hang on to those for another project if I didn't have to use them this time. So I just really um, went, as you can see, went really random on this, uh, trying to just arrange the glass. In most cases, it's about three layers thick. Um, tried to make sure that I didn't have any uh, obvious gaps that wouldn't fill in. And so, you know, want to make sure I have enough glass layered there. Uh, but other than that, just kind of went with a, a random approach, trying to make sure the pretty colors and the pretty uh, patterns are, are facing up. And uh, I'm gonna fire this. So I'll use the, the schedule I'll post in the comments that I received from uh, Creative Paradise and uh, wish me luck. Hopefully we'll end up with a piece that turns out nice and then I can fuse it into a bowl, or excuse me, a, a plate. Thanks. Okay, here's the, um, piece with the the patty gray mold and the chopped up it is um it is so creamsicle looking <laughs> love the uh 
the orange and the and the white. Uh, I did not get any large eruptions, any large bubbles, as I've seen a lot of people can get with this mold. Uh, you, you might see there's a couple of little divots. There's a divot there. There's another one there. And then there's a... I can't tell if those are because there wasn't enough glass in that area and then it sunk in. I, I, they're not bubbles, so it's not that. So I'm just thinking maybe there wasn't enough glass. But generally speaking, I got a pretty smooth surface on this. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. Thinking about popping it out of the mold, flipping it upside down to see what the bottom looks like, and then uh, maybe doing another full fuse on that to kind of smooth everything out again before slumping it. This, see what this looks like now. I'm not sure, there's a piece of kiln paper under here, so this is gonna be kind of messy, I think, as I flip it out. You're not gonna be able to get the full effect, but. Okay, it came out cleanly, that's good. So I took the piece out. This is what you get on the top, and then this is what the bottom looked like. And it's much wider, obviously. And I actually liked the color of the, the orange quite a bit, so I purposely loaded this thing with a lot of white on the bottom. So I could put it this way in the kiln and refire it and have this be the new top, but I really think I like these colors better. So you can probably see through the texture there. There's quite a few divots. And I just don't know if that's because I didn't have enough glass in there. I guessing that's what's happened. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a couple of um, pieces of chunks of clear frit, I think, in there, and then uh, maybe dust the whole thing with some clear frit, just a light layer, and refuse a, a full fuse on this to hopefully kind of smooth that out a little bit. And then, uh, then we'll go into slumping. So stay tuned for what that looks like. Okay, so I've changed my plan, and my motto is always that I like to bring you along on the learning journey as I learn, so I'm gonna tell you why I've changed my mind. So I started to put, uh, I have some uh, coarse crystal clear frit. I've started to put a piece of frit in these divots that are in here, and then I decided, well, this is all opaque glass, and a piece of clear frit in there is gonna stand out like a sore thumb. Uh, because there's not a clear layer on top. So that color displacement is gonna be seen and I didn't want that. So I changed my mind and and I'm still gonna go to the kiln and I'm just gonna do a good old fashioned full fuse on this. Uh, I think I am gonna dust some clear powder on it, but um, I don't know, well, no, maybe I won't. <laughs> Changing my mind as I go, maybe I won't. I guess I don't wanna risk de um, any divot forming. And uh, this has such a nice, clean look as it is, but without all of this variation. So here, and here's why. So I have, um, you know, the, the six millimeter rule, glass wants to be six millimeters. I realize that this is a thicker piece, 7.2 in some places, 6.4, um, look at that, 8.7. So what's gonna happen is when I take this to a full fuse, this I think is gonna spread out more. And I think that maybe some of these divots will naturally fill in anyway as this circle, which is about 10 and a half inches, actually spreads out and becomes a little bit bigger. So let's, let's learn together and test the diameter here. Uh, 10, I'm gonna call that 10 and, a, and 3 eighths inches on this thing. And so let's see how much bigger it gets when I fire it again. And let's see if it naturally uh, takes care of some of these divots and they, and they fill in. Uh, the risk is that they don't, and they go crazy on me and turn into giant bubbles or something that uh, explode, but we'll see. Okay, so here's this piece out of the kiln. Um, I took it up to 1490 and held it for 10 minutes. It didn't smooth out as much as I would want, although some of the significant uh, divots that were in there are just a little bit better, marginally better. Uh, it really didn't even spread out too much, and as I check the thickness, in many cases it's still... Um, you know, it's still kind of on the thicker side. So it didn't really, um, yeah, it didn't really spread out as much as I thought, but again, I only held it for 10 minutes at 1490, so maybe it needed to be held a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, so anyway, now I'm going to uh, slump this thing. Stay tuned. All right, it's done. Here is the, uh, the finished piece, and I'm very happy with this one. Um, I slumped it into a mold. I actually bought this mold secondhand. It comes from Slumpies. There's the, uh, let's see. 
Slumpy's mold SM9802. I looked it up at one point and in my head I've got pasta bowl. I can't remember if that's what they call this for sure or not. I really like this mold. This is about 10 inches or so in, in diameter and then you got about an inch on each side. It's kind of a neat um, mold, particularly if you do a circular piece, which I've done another piece in this mold that I've actually shared a video. It was the uh, color displacement video, the blue bowl with the uh, clear tech to dots. <clears throat> If you have a piece that goes over this, you end up creating a really cool rim on the bowl. In this case, uh, this piece fit right down into that circle, and so I don't have a rim on it, but I'm really happy with it. I think the, um, you know, the, it's relatively shallow, but it's, it's definitely a, a defined bowl. Uh, I think it's a nice little, you know, serving platter, cookie tray, uh, pasta bowl, giant ice cream bowl, whatever you want to make of it. Uh, I love this glass. This was a bullseye. It was an orange and white streaky. Uh, I think it looks like creamsicle and uh, I'm pretty pleased with the way this piece turned out. I'll fire my, or excuse me, I'll post my slumping schedule. I did a super, super slow conservative ramp only because this glass ended up being about seven and a half millimeters thick and I just didn't want to risk breaking it and so I only um, ramped up at 175 degrees an hour. So it was a pretty slow firing, but you know, it worked. And so uh, I have a nice piece in the end and I'll share my schedule below. Thanks everybody for watching. I, I really love doing these videos and I, I hope you're enjoying them. Drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you're learning something along with me, I'd love to know what you learned. Please hit the subscribe button and you'll see future videos coming out. Share this. I know we all belong to different social media pages. If you think other people would find it interesting, please grab the link and share it too. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.